Hi guys, welcome back to Life Made Simple with Bella. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make all three of these delicious meals that we have made for Shabbat. So stay tuned to see how easy it is to make all three of these dishes for your next Shabbat table. So what I'm going to do is cut everything I need for the first meal which is called Korohan. It is a chicken and potato dish. I first cut up the onions, peppers, and the tomatoes into thin slices as you see me do here and I put everything separate so that it's not mixed together and you'll see me saute it separately. Next you're going to see me cut these peppers. I use about two peppers. You could use more if you guys like. This is enough for I think two and a half chickens. We had a bunch of people. This is still in the Poconos trip that we went to. I have yet to post it but I really wanted to show you guys how to make these delicious meals. So I diced this up into about a finger size um, slices. You can cut it however you want. It just makes the dish so delicious. If you try it, let me know in the comments down below. I would really want to for you to tag me on my Instagram, Life Made Simple with Bella, and let me know how it comes out. Next, you're going to see me cut the tomatoes, same as the peppers, same size. Like I said, you can cut it however you like it. It doesn't have to be the way I'm doing it. It just fills up the dish and makes it so delicious. As you can see, I'm using about three plum tomatoes. You can use more, you can use less. I think it's just for flavor. That's all I'm adding it for. The chicken itself is going to have so much juice and so much flavor that you don't need too much of these ingredients. And now you see me putting the avocado oil into two pans because we didn't have a big enough pan there so we had to divide it and then you'll see me later on transfer it to a foil and finish baking it in the oven but you don't have to do that we just needed the pans for something else i put in the onions i'm sauteing it in both pans making sure it is translucent then you'll see me add the chicken i chopped two and a half chickens up to up into a few pieces and I'm dividing it between these two pots, making sure that it's equal so that I can add the same amount for each pot. And then I go ahead and try to mix it a little bit so that the onion gets incorporated with the chicken on both pots and right now the temperature is on high now you'll see me add the cumin I will add some garlic salt pepper and that's about it I think I don't really have measurements I just put it to taste after it's almost about ready I try to taste it and if I think I need anything extra I go ahead and I add it right before it is all done cooking I 
after putting all the spices, I try to mix it. It's a little hard, there's a lot of uh, chicken. And then I think I will be adding some paprika also for the taste and the color. And mix everything up again. I cover it for a little, let it cook. This I'm going to divide between the two pots and also mixing it. Those are the peppers. Then I'll add the tomatoes at, at the same time. And I go ahead and mix that. Mix it just a little. You don't have to go crazy. Um, we're going to close the pot, let it come to a boil, and we're going to put it on a medium to low heat let it start doing its thing and then I'm going to as you see here put in the foil wrap it up and I'm gonna put it in the oven so it can continue to cook I only do this because where we were at we didn't have extra pots and pans so they needed to use it otherwise you can just leave it on the stovetop for about an hour hour and a half and let it cook on the stovetop but in this case we put it in the oven 350 degrees for about an hour. Then for this dish, we did cut up at least, I think, two bags of Idaho potatoes and we fried these potatoes up when it was all done we put the potatoes on on the bottom of the dish and put our main chicken with the sauce on top of it and it was just so delicious you must give this a try let me know in the comments down below if you did try it this dish is called korohan it's a jewish cuisine over here I'm just gonna show you how it came out I left it for when the Shabbat came in and I will show you how we plated it and the juices it is just so delicious I'm telling you guys you have to try it And next on the menu, we are washing some cilantro for our barsh. It is a rice dish with cilantro. It's called green rice. In this dish, you can use either chicken or beef. It depends on your preference, whatever you like. In this case, we used chicken. And here you'll see it, my sister cutting up into small little cubes one onion i believe you can actually maybe with one and a half these ingredients are for about two and a half cups of rice here you'll see her saute with some oil i believe she put about half a cup of oil it needs a lot of oil and we're going to wash the rice while the rice is being washed the cilantro was underwater with, with some salt and wash this rice thoroughly so that some of the starch just disappears after we wash the rice a few times we left some water and let it soak for a little bit So here you're gonna see her add, this is about a pound and a half, and then she's gonna add a little bit more from the other, um, the other chicken, about, I would say two pounds of chicken. For this dish, she added a little bit of oil because like I said, this dish requires a good amount of oil. And 
make sure you put a good amount of oil so it doesn't become too sticky. I forgot to mention that the chicken needs to be cut into small little cubes. So just mix it all up, saute, put some salt, again pepper to taste. We don't measure, everything is by the eye. And she's going to lower the heat and let it simmer for about 20-30 minutes. Over here she blends up some of the cilantro with some water. She does that for the rice dish to have a little bit of color. The rest of it she does chop up and puts it in the dish together and mixes it all up so that it can turn out a really bright, bright green color. I can sit beside you while you're going on about your simple life. Nothing left you thinking that maybe you're not different. After we put all of the cilantro, I forgot how many bunches we got. I think we got about five to six bunches of cilantro. And we washed it thoroughly, put it under um, salt water, make sure all the bugs are not there. We let it simmer for about another five, ten minutes, and then we added the rice. And then we made sure that the water goes a little bit above the rice for it to cook. Also, we did transfer because it was sticking to this pan. We transferred it to a non-stick pan just so it will be easier and not stick to the bottom of the pan. So make sure when you're cooking that you have a non-stick pan. As you see here, she will make a little bit of holes like that and put some bounty, cover it, so that the water doesn't drip and doesn't become mushy. There you have it, it is done and ready for Shabbat dinner. This is a very popular dish in our culture and this is served at least once a week in our house and it's called Bach delicious let me know if you try it again in the comments down below or tag me on my instagram page i forgot to mention the rice needs to be cooked at least for 30 minutes over here you're gonna see my niece now cooking everybody had to make a dish she was making osh sobo that is also a baharian dish we usually have it on uh, saturday around 12 let's say for lunch this is a very popular dish as well in our jewish culture she's gonna dice up two onions right here she diced everything up and then she puts everything together over here you'll see her cut up one whole carrot into small little cubes or you can grate it it's up to you and your preference I prefer grating it because I don't have time to chop everything has to be easy fast for me so she's chopping everything up it, it it comes out the same so it doesn't matter how you cut it but you're using one carrot same goes for the pepper she used one pepper also diced it up into small little cubes and puts it aside. And then we used one green apple, same thing. We're gonna dice it up, in small little cubes. You can grate it, like I said, that's how I would prefer it, but she was making the dish, so we let her do it how she does it usually. Over here I show you what we use. It's lamb stew, about I think that was a pound and a half, so we used about three pounds. We didn't use everything, that's just how much I bought. And one more thing she diced us up is the tomato. I think she uses two tomatoes. 
small little cubes once again and leave it aside until you're ready to cook it. So here she's going to add some oil generously. Don't be shy. This also requires a little bit of oil and she's going to fry up the lamb stew first take it out of the dish and then put the onion saute it and then put the lamb stew back into the dish and this dish is specifically designed for an overnight cooking and we buy this for the osubo and on the bottom it gives this uh, fried rice that is so delicious it's probably burnt rice but it's so delicious i did not take a picture of it but hopefully next time i make it i will make sure that i do that for you so here you'll see her she's going to just fry it up a little bit give that juice and flavor to the oil and then add the onions saute the onions and put all the spices after she adds the meat back And here you see everything she cut up already so easy one two three the only thing that takes time is the chopping up the ingredients otherwise this dish is so easy to make really quick no hassle So here she's going to add the onions first, saute it a little bit, and then we add the lamb stew on top of that and mix it all together. And she added a little bit of more oil just because this dish does require a good amount of oil. Now we're going to add the lamb stew back and give it a little mix. Here she adds some of the carrots. And then you add the uh, peppers. And then you add the rest of the ingredients. She adds a few handfuls of salt, but you can salt it to taste. Also, after it's done cooking a little bit, just take a little spoon, give it a taste. If you think it needs any more spices, just add it and do it the way you like it. She also added some peppers to taste. And now she's just going to mix it all up and then add the liquid. She also adds a little bit of pepper, also for taste and color, and a whole can of tomato sauce. Then we add in the rice, I believe we did two cups of rice for this. You can add more, you can add less. For us, two cups was plenty. And then we added the sour cherries, they're called ocha, and mix it all up. It's already giving its own juices, but that's good. Then you're gonna see her add water to it. It's gonna go also above all the ingredients. And the last thing that we do is put in the eggs and let it cook overnight. Next to where she's cooking, you'll see another pan. We were doing some rice for the kids. And the leftover chicken that we had um, and we had that for lunch and that was so delicious as well chef Ellie was cooking the rice and he's an amazing cook in our family
So shout out to Ellie. Here you're gonna see her put the eggs. We wash the eggs and we put about 12, maybe 15 eggs. Overnight they cook, they become this brown color and the kids just enjoy it. She's just bringing up all the uh, bones up so it doesn't get stuck to the bottom of the pan. We close it and we're going to put it on the blech and it's going to stay overnight. This was already the next morning that we checked up on it. She did her magic, maybe mixed it a few times and this is the deliciousness that came out. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like, comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. See you all on my next one. Bye now.